Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. Website, thisweekinamerica.us. With us on the program, John Peel, author of the book, How Far from the Apple Tree, a son in relation to his famous father. As I mentioned in the introduction, his father is uh, the noted preacher and author, Norman Vincent Peel. John Peel, welcome to This Week in America. Great to have you with us on the program. Thank you. I'm uh, glad to be talking with you. Well, there is so much to uh, to talk about in the program. And let's just start, because when you mention to some people, Norman Vincent Peale, they're like, yeah, I remember him. I mean, the books, the television, the radio. And others are like, maybe I've heard the name, but I'm not real sure. Just very briefly, who was your father? Because he was a major, a major factor in U.S. media and in religion for a number of years. Yes, uh, for 52 years, he was minister of a church in New York City on Fifth Avenue called the Marble Collegiate Church. He wrote 46 books, the most popular of which was The Power of Positive Thinking, published in 1952. He and his mother uh, started a magazine called Guideposts, and he was a lecturer on the lecture circuit of business conventions of one sort or another, and he was on radio for a good deal of time, and he also had a television program with Mother called What's Your Trouble? He was very, very active. He passed away in 1993 at the age of 95. He had a great impact on so many people around the country and around the world, and when you and your, and John is the only son, he has two sisters, and as you were growing up in the, the 30s and the early 40s, your father was very busy. He was just taking off with the radio program, getting into prominence uh, because of that all across the country. When did you first realize that my dad is probably different than a lot of my friend's fathers because he is uh, he's a noted national celebrity? Well, I didn't know how it was with other people and their fathers. Um, uh, my father was did become famous. He was becoming famous in my early years. And my two sisters and I had to adjust to a pattern where he left after Sunday services and came back at the end of the week after having uh, done a lot of speaking around the country. And then he closeted himself in his study to prepare for the Sunday services, and then off he would go again. And so he was absent a great deal of the time. You know, it's interesting, and the book is Just How Far From the Apple Tree, A Son in Relation to His Famous Father. The book is available, by the way, by title at uh, at Amazon.com. There were so many times when you're talking, and it's like that's a normal family, and other times when it's not like a normal family. I was struck in the one chapter in the book, you're talking about the role your mother had in the family, and she, in essence, was a gatekeeper for your father, including when the children wanted a chance to talk to Dad. Yes, uh, my mother took that as her role. She um, protected uh, my father. Uh, her idea was that uh, she was giving him maximally good conditions to be creative in his work. And so she protected him and she did become, as we call it, a gatekeeper. I remember once I was 14 years old, I think, I wanted to talk to my dad, like sons want to talk to their dads. So I asked mother if I could talk to dad. And uh, she went back into their bedroom and he came uh, into the my bedroom uh, adjusting the tie string on his, uh, on his uh, robe and uh, said rather gruffly, um, what do you want to talk about? Well, what I wanted was to connect with him and I could see that wasn't going to work on this time. So... I said, oh, nothing. We can talk about it later. Well, it was interesting, as you talk about your mother, who was gone quite a bit, worked on a number of boards, was CEO of one of the foundations that your father had. And you said sort of jokingly, you used to refer to your mother as, uh, as maybe working in a lumber yard because she, she was dealing with so many boards. It was an early witticism of mine. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, but we, and when you talk about that and, and the problems you had in trying to, to get close to your father, you, you did feel in certain ways close with him. The summers you talk about were summers that a lot of families had. You were at Sugar Tree Farm. That was where the family went for the summer. Talk about that because you made that sound like that's where the family got together, and it was a, a normal family when we were there and together. Yes, before uh, 1952, when I was uh, young, 
uh, up in, before um, the end of high school. Uh, we had a very happy family life. We had this small farm in Dutchess County, about two hours north of New York City. And we went there for most of the summers and holidays during the year. Had a great time. Uh, mother and Dad took us to special places where we felt really close to them, such as the Mountain View House in Whitefield, New Hampshire, and the Mohonk Mountain Cows House on a ridge above the Hudson River. And uh, we, we played games together, and we talked together, and more normal-like. You talk about in 1946, your dad goes to school and gets you out of school. The school wasn't real happy about it, but you had a chance to go see a, I think it was a playoff game, wasn't it? The Dodgers and the Cardinals at Ebbets Field. That's a dad that you could relate to. He's taking me out of school so I can go to a ball game. This was the last game of the 1946 pennant between the St. Louis Cardinals and the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. And my father went to Mr. Alexander Prince, the a head of a uh, principal of our school and argued that if my sister Maggie and I could be excused, this would contribute to our education. He, of course, <laughs> was very skeptical about this, but Dad sweet talked him into it. And we went to the ballpark, uh, we ate popcorn, we hot dogs, we yelled and screamed and had a great time. And it was just like two kids with their father. That really created memories, and sometimes schools need to take that into account. I've been through similar situations with taking our kids out of school, that that actually created a lasting memory that you vividly write about in the book. And our guest on the program today is John Peel, set of noted preacher and author Norman Vincent Peel. Just how far from the apple tree is John's book, A Son in Relation to His Famous Father? You can find it at uh, Amazon.com by title, there's a an area where you talk about mood swings and you talk about anger. And there was a time, I believe it's with your wife's sister, that you felt bad afterwards, but you really lost your temper at that particular point in time. And your sister said, what did our parents do to us? And that's an interesting question. What did your parents do to you? Yes, that is a very interesting question. Uh, uh... I got a whole range of emotions as I was growing up, uh, pretty much beginning with college years. Uh, uh, I was uh, frustrated, I was disappointed, I wondered what was going on that I couldn't have personal contact with my dad on an emotional level. Uh, I got uh, more than frustrated and more than disappointed. I felt an anger that that really shouldn't be. Sort of ate away at me this anger, and uh, so Maggie was asking, "How did our parents treat us in such a way that we get like this?" I don't have an answer to that question, except the, the way I put it in the book is a description of family life as it affected me and my dad. Was there a period, and you talk early with the problems you talked about when you were fourteen, and literally had to make an appointment to talk to your dad? Did things really take a, a, a turn for the worse in terms of the relationship when you went off to college? You were a college, I believe, that your father wasn't all that excited about, a, a theological seminary. You were trying to determine, do I want to be a minister? Do I want to be a professor? Is that when things sort of came to a head? Yes, uh, it was in 1960, and I chose, for some reason, to go to Union Theological Seminary in New York City a fine seminary with distinguished faculty and an excellent reputation. And Dad did not like this. He tried to, he, uh, he asked friends of his to uh, take me to lunch and try to persuade me not to go there. And I remember, on a, this is on the heavy side, he wrote me a letter just before I was to go into the seminary. He said, Dear John, I cannot understand why you are going into the seat of my most implacable enemies. Love that. But I did go into the seminary. I did well there. And uh, he uh, and I did okay uh, in our relationship, even though there was that big difference. And politically, there was a difference. You talk in the book just how far from the apple tree a son in relation to his famous father, in this case, the famous father, Norman Vincent Peale, uh, noted author uh, and preacher. 
His book, The Power of Positive Thinking, still shapes the lives of many people all across the world. I, was there a time politically when you realize I'm different than my dad? You talk about voting for Nixon the first time out, and that was sort of like when you when you made the break, and Nixon was a, was a close personal friend of your father. That's right. Uh, the, in 1960, I voted for uh, Mr. Nixon over John Kennedy. I was under the influence of uh, my uh, parents. And um, uh, later, uh, Dad and Nixon continued to be close. There was one difficult time between me and my dad that concerned Mr. Nixon when he invited Dad to be a pastor to the boys in Vietnam. And I suggested to him that if he went on that trip, he would be giving, uh, he would be giving approval, tacit approval right, to right. Nixon's policies. And he said, no, I wouldn't. And I said, yes, you would. And our voices raised it against each other. And mother came into the room and said to me, you will not talk to your father like that. And I said, I still like this. I think dad liked this too. I said, uh, I'll talk to my father any damn way I please. <laughs> a little defiance there. Your dad had to like that. Go, yeah, okay. Maybe he didn't express it, but he's thinking, okay, that's my boy. That's I, I like that. Just how far from the apple tree is that in relation to his famous father, John Peel, our guest on the program. The book is available at Amazon. Rapidly running out of time on the program. There were there were several times that you actually tried to reach out, made that effort to reach out to your father. And one really had mixed emotions for you. That was the 40th anniversary uh, of your father being minister at the Marble Collegiate Church, where you said some very nice things and you were able to express that. And your father, you talk about maybe for one of the few times expressed his love for you, but it was done in a public setting as opposed to just the two of you expressing those feelings. Uh, aside from everything else I felt, I loved my dad. Uh, I always have and always will. I respected him, and when I was a boy in the church, I looked up to him and was inspired by his preaching and his conducting of services. And I, it meant a great deal to me to uh, speak on the occasion, I think it was the 25th anniversary, the 40th anniversary, and especially at his uh, funeral, which these days they call a celebration of the life of service. And I decided on these events that I was going to prepare a real good speech and speak in the way that he would speak. And I uh, did really well. And at least on the public level, we were close. The book is Just How Far From the Apple Tree, A Sudden Relation to His Famous Father. You went through so much in your life, battling cancer a number of times, depression, alcoholism, heart issues, and now you're doing well, you're retired, enjoying life. At what point in your life did you go, you know, I'm John Peel and I'm okay with that. I'm really happy who I am. Uh, quite recently, um, around um, or the early uh, 21st century, maybe uh, 2004 or something like that, uh, and it's got uh, so much improved. I feel like I've come from the darkness of the state you described of depression and alcoholism into the sunlight of the spirit by being very active in the program of the 12-step program that I'm involved in. And uh, my Lydia and my wife and I are having a wonderful retirement. We're active, productive, doing what we want to do. And, and I don't worry so much anymore about uh, my dad. Is that sort of the lesson that you would like to, to, to teach to, to people who grow up, and not necessarily with a father of the prominence of yours, but those who grow up with a, a famous father in a particular industry, a school teacher, and you're expected to mirror a son of, an, of a minister, to, to not give up hope, to find out who you are and develop your own identity? We've got about a minute left in the program. Yes, that's right. I feel that my story, which is a story about me, but it can be a story about lots of other people who have fathers who were preoccupied with their own work, who uh, didn't open up, who were absent a lot, and who uh, was sort of like dad was to me. It doesn't really matter whether they're famous or not. And uh, the way I've gone through these difficulties that you described and that come out of them 
uh, might be an inspiration to other people. That's what I'm hoping it will be. Well, the book is, it's called Just How Far From the Apple Tree, A Son in Relation to His Famous Father, available by title at Amazon.com. John Peel has been our guest on the program. John, a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. This time has seemed to pass very rapidly. Very quickly. John, hang on one second. I'll be right back. Don't go away.